I have I have censored myself before because I didn't want to get targeted on Twitch or YouTube or things like that. Um, but I think it's I think it's about time we actually look at the science, we look at the data, and we recognize that for a large portion of transgender people, they have serious mental health issues. Serious mental health issues. And this is being worsened by the way that we are treating them. We are making these people deranged. And I, I'm not going to bury the lead. Many studies show that a majority of transgender people have personality disorders. Personality disorders are extremely dangerous individuals. If the research is true that let's say 50% of transgender people have personality disorders, specifically narcissistic personality disorder and borderline personality disorder, then half of all trans people that you come to are a threat to everyone around them and their family. That is not a joke, that is not an exaggeration, and that is not fear-mongering, that is not some made-up shit. People with NPD and BPD are dangerous to everyone who, who seeks a relationship with them. They will abuse you, they will manipulate you, they will use you, they will steal from you, they will lie about you, they will gaslight you, they will find ways to harm you. Okay? And so, yeah, let's, let's, let's begin. So let's look at two things, because I've been talking a lot about NPD, and I've been talking a lot about BPD. I've mentioned covert personality disorder. So let's look at, well, what is that? Right? Like, like, what is that? So the number one and the number two diagnosis, we will start with the number one diagnosis. This is, this is borderline personality disorder. Personality disorder characterized by emotional dysregulation, a pattern of unstable interpersonal relationships and high impulsivity slash recklessness. Patients can oscillate quickly between devaluing and idealizing relationships, commonly known as splitting. Other features include difficulty controlling anger, recurrent suicidal or self-harm behaviors, identity disturbance, and chronic feelings of emptiness. But we can just tie it to gender dysphoria, even though you don't have persistent gender dysphoria, and then all of a sudden all of these problems are just, that's just your gender dysphoria even though you don't actually have those. The population prevalence is estimated to be between 1.6 and 6%, not 20%, like it is in the trans community, according to that study. Somewhere between 2 to 6%. Most of the studies that I see, see 3 to 4%. I mean, orders of magnitude of, 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 sorry. 500% more likely. Nine times, if we're saying 3%, right? Yeah. Or sorry, sorry, not nine times, six times. Six times more likely. The prevalence in primary care settings is about 6% and 10% in outpatient mental health clinics and is as high as 20% in psychiatric inpatients. Prevalence of BPD decreases in older age groups, obviously. Um, it's predominantly in females and also present three times more commonly than men in treatment settings. What is the prognosis? What is it? What, what's what's life look like for someone with BPD? The course of BPD is typically characterized by chronic instability in adolescence and early adulthood. Individuals can have serious affective instability, impulsivity, including self harm and suicide attempts, and high levels of use of healthcare utilization. It has significant impact on individuals' social and occupational functioning, including recurrent job losses, educational failure, and separation or divorce are common. Premature death from suicide can occur, especially with those with co-occurring depressive disorders or substance abuse disorders. Naturalistic studies have shown that patients with BPD can have progressive improvement and remission, yada, yada, yada. Comorbidity, depressive and bipolar disorders, obviously, eating disorders, PTSD, attention, ADHD, and substance use disorder. So let's look at uh, criteria. What do you have to be like, to, like you saw, like what the prognosis is, what are these people like? 
And we're talking about like a very significant minority of transgender people. What's it look like? You need to have at least five out of these nine in order to be diagnosed. So a minimum of five, a majority of these. Okay? Can you zoom in a little bit? Maybe. Let's see if it... Yeah, I mean, I guess that helps. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Number one, frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. A pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of ideolation, idealization and devaluation. This is incredibly dangerous to people that are around you. You have someone that worships you, that loves you, that thinks the sun signs, shines and sets in your ass. And then all of a sudden they flip a fucking switch and they hate you. They think you're a monster. They think you're a piece of shit. They think you're worthless and they let you know. That's what it's like to be friends with someone with BTD. And they constantly feel like you're going to abandon them. They constantly accuse you of abandoning them. They constantly text you if you don't show up to something that you're this terrible person. And all of a sudden, because you, you, you couldn't go to dinner with them that night when you said you could, they go from idealization to talking about how horrible and terrible of a piece of shit you are and start telling other people that and then start lying about it, things, making up stories. Happens all the time. Identity disturbance. Markedly and persistently unstable self-image or sense of self. Oh, I wonder what happens when you map that onto gender dysphoria that you imagined. That one's really convenient for the... Mm -hmm. uh, gender dysphoria one. Impulsivity in at least two areas that are potentially self-damaging. Sp uh, spending, sex, substance abuse, reckless driving, binge eating. Do not include uh, suicidal or self-mutilating uh, behavior because that's number five. Uh, or sorry, uh, yeah. Recurrent suicidal behavior, gestures or threats or self-mutilating behavior. Six, effective instability due to a marked reactivity of mood. So intense episodic dysphoria irritability or anxiety usually lasting a few hours and only rarely more than a few days I, for lack of a better term just being crazy <laughs> chronic feelings of emptiness never can fill that void which is part of the thing that maps on with npd as we'll get in in, in, in a minute um you know it, it's chronically like needing that narcissistic supply right but the narcissistic supply from a narcissist, which is the second most common disorder that transgender people have, orders of magnitude higher than the average population, right? We're talking about potentially half of them have either this or NPD in some studies. In some studies, it says 80%, but I mean, most of the studies hover around 50 to 60%. That chronic feeling of emptiness in, in BPD is all about is, is is the constant reassurance that you'll be okay and that you won't abandon them. With narcissistic personality disorder, it's you need to constantly tell me that you need to constantly affirm my fantasy of myself, which we'll get into. Inappropriate, intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. Frequent displays of temper, constant anger, and recurrent physical fights. Very common with BPD. And lastly, transient stress-related paranoid ideation or severe disassociative symptoms. This is in really bad. I mean, this is like, they're coming to take me away, hee hee. They're coming to take me away, ha ha, on bad days. So that's the number one most common thing. Even in a study that was doing everything it could to be like, it's not that bad, we promise. These two plus a couple, uh, a couple of people with cluster Cs were making up 50% of the population. Which is, that's frightening. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention that in that in value in 98, 24 people didn't show up for the second round. So we can't I count I guess they them. didn't like what they heard. We can't count them, but there's a lot of stigma around the idea of gatekeeping and knowing that they were being in research. Wouldn't surprise me if that population was higher. I think it probably skewed the data by not doing what it did. Narcissistic personality disorder. Prevalence rate range between 0% to 6.2% in community samples. 50 to 75% of diagnoses are male. 
usually you'll see one to two percent of the population and the trans population some research has it as high as 30 percent some has it as high as um as like i think it was as high as like four percent usually you see one to two so somewhere between like double to 15 times but again i think what you're really looking at more often than not is covert vulnerable narcissism and that's why there's a large swath of people that have a personality disorder but they can't figure out which one it is vulnerability and self-esteem makes individuals with npd very sensitive to injury from criticism or defeat Impairment can be severe and may include marital problems and interpersonal relationship conflicts. Individuals may face occupational difficulties and show an unwillingness to take risks in competitive or other situations in which defeat is possible. Individuals with NPD may have more difficult uh, difficulties to the aging process, especially when it comes to new physical and occupational limitations related to aging. So morbid a lot with uh, drugs and anorexia nervosa um, associated, you know, with all of the other with, with all the other cluster Bs, but NPD does correlate a little bit more with paranoid personality disorders like schizophrenia and things like that. Well, schizoaffective, but trading with schizophrenia. I'm not getting into all that. That's a different video. Yeah. Okay. So what is, wh how do you diagnose someone with narcissistic personality disorder, right? A large swath of trans people have this. A pervasive pattern of grandiosity. This is the issue that I have. I don't think they're grandiose. I think they're covert vulnerable. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Need for admiration and a lack of empathy, beginning by early, early adulthood and present in a very a variety of contexts, as indicated by five or more of the following. Has grandiose sense of self-importance, exaggerates achievements and talents, expects to be recognized as superior without commensurate achievements is preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Sound like a lot of trans activists and people in that community? Believes that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special or high status people or institutions. Sound like transgender people, activists much? Requires excessive admiration has a sense of entitlement, i.e. unreasonable expectations of especially favorable treatment or automatic compliance with his or her expectations. Say the pronoun bigot or else. Is interpersonally exploitative. Takes advantage of others to achieve his or her own ends. A, a trans, sorry, not transgender, a narcissist will always use you. They will lie to you. They will trick you. They will sometimes they will like, they will do crazy shit. I grew up with with a covert vulnerable narcissist, and just as one example of something that he did, he was living downtown with my mother. This was after I had moved out. So what did he do? He keyed my mom's car and broke her window to convince her that they were living in a dangerous neighborhood, so that she would seek protection from him. And so that she would admire him as her protector and so that they could move out of the apartment that he didn't like. When the cops investigated, the only fingerprints they found were his. And she just believed him because narcissists, they will they use and manipulate you to such a degree that your own identity is destroyed and that your identity becomes part of their identity. To such a degree that when you leave a narcissist, entire years of your memory will disappear because they're not your memories. And you have to you have to break them apart from the lies that the narcissist told you and the manipulation and the abuse that they gave you to to make you to make you fulfill their fantasy. These are extremely abusive, dangerous people. And they're like, you know, somewhere between like five and 20 percent of all trans people. They are a serious threat. And they are not to be taken lightly. They will ruin your life. It will destroy you. They will rip through you and not give it a second thought. And instead of treating these problems and making them self-aware narcissists, we're just like, oh, you must be trans. Okay. We don't need to, we don't need to treat all these personality disorders that make you a horrible person that will abuse and manipulate and use everyone and demand admiration and special treatment. Instead of doing that, we'll just, just give you HRT and a medical bill, turn you into a paycheck.
instead of helping you not be an abuser. Lacks empathy and is unwilling to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. Is often envious of others and believes that others are envious of him or her. And then lastly, shows uh, arrogant, haughty behaviors or attitudes. So, according to PsychDB, narcissistic personality disorder can be broken down into three concepts. Overt narcissism, grandiose, stereotypical, loud. Um, covert narcissism, more fragile, self eff uh, eff Case I can never say that self effacing, uh, overly aware of others, and then lastly, malignant narcissism a combination of narcissistic personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder. So this is when you have narcissism and you're a psychopath. Um, a large portion of, of people with NPD have malignant narcissism. Um, I, I don't want to say that these are your serial killers, but these are your serial killers, right? <laughs> like. Right, like malignant narcissists that are like grandiose, live in a fantasy world, demand that you that you engage in their fantasy or they or they'll use you, lie to you, and react with rage, but also lack empathy and lack an ability to really understand how humans think and believe. And so they don't even understand the social situation in the world around them. You combine those two things together and with strong enough uh rage issues and anger problems and you get a serial killer. Malignant narcs are your drink the Kool-Aid cult leaders. True. Why are you co describing communists to a T? Um, because we'll, we'll react to, to, to Jordan Peterson here in a minute. Because left, leftist philosophy creates narcissism. That's why. Especially in transgender people. It is, it is, it creates and breeds it. So last thing I want to show you is a little bit more of a breakdown of um, covert vulnerable um, narcissism. This is from clevelandclinic.org. Um, it was a good little breakdown that was really simple to read, so that's why I went with it. Um, so what is a covert narcissist? There are two kinds of narcissism. Overt narcissism, again, Malignant narcissism, there's some, some people believe that malignant narcissism is a part of narcissism. Some people believe it's a combination and therefore it shouldn't be considered a part of narcissism. It's kind of its like own thing. The truth is, is that cluster Bs are a lot more complex than we know. And that like there's general groupings, but like usually you have some combination of other personality disorders. Over narcissism is what we tend to think of as the uh, standard textbook definition of NPD. Covert narcissism, also known as vulnerable narcissism, is the more introverted side of NPD. Covert narcissism experiences the same insecurities as an overt narcissist, but internalizes their self-importance, often while hyper-focusing on their need for attention. While they share similar traits with one another, the difference between overt and covert narcissism is all in how a person shows up and how they express these traits. Quote, overt narcissists walk into a room and you immediately feel these narcissistic traits. They're loud, they're aggressive, they're very big in their presentation. Covert narcissists, though, are people who fly under the radar. Even if you've been in a relationship with someone for years, their covert narcissism may be so subtle that you're not even aware of it for a very long time. So what are the traits of a covert narcissist? An overinflated sense of self-importance. A lack of empathy. A need for excessive admiration. A sense of entitlement. Surrounding yourself with superficial relationships. Taking advantage of others for personal gain. Resistant to change. And hyper-focusing on fantasies of grandeur. Sensitivity to criticism. Narcissists have a hard time responding to criticism, even when they're in the wrong. But while an overt narcissist might come off as combative, covert narcissists will be defensive. Covert narcissists don't want to feel humiliated or mocked, so they tend to turn criticism around and defend against it quite quickly. With covert narcissists, backhanded statements and insults are more common even though they're subtle. Interesting. 
I mean, like I said, I'll put all of these links in here. But I wanted to give you kind of a baseline of all of these personality traits and recognize that for the overwhelming majority of the trans population, these are completely untreated. And many studies seem to show that a majority of the population has these disorders, that they are, that these are dangerous psych, dangerous forms of psychopathology where they will use and abuse anyone around them and that they will attempt to, that they lack empathy, that they are mean spirited, hateful people. And they don't give a fuck about you. 